In this next exercise, we will learn how to create cross-section sheets along our divided highway section. We'll once again open up the file where we're going to create these sheets. Um, this could be created in a separate file with the corridor referenced, but in this case I'm just going to create them right in the, the same file that we created the corridor in just to make things a little bit easier here. Uh, but, as I said, I could have created this in a blank file, referenced the corridor in, and created them that way just as well. The creation of the sheet files is kind of a, a two-step process. The first part of the process is we're going to define a series of named boundaries, or boundary areas, where the cross-sections will get cut. The second part of the process will be to build the sheets themselves from those boundary areas. So we've opened up the file here. We've got our corridor in here that runs along the length of this uh, 10 kilometers, 6 mile-ish project. And we're going to go to the Drawing Production tab and run our Named Boundary tool. There are Four options, or there's actually eight tools here, but the ones we're going to focus on are these at the beginning. These first four are dedicated to the civil product. These other four options are kind of generic microstation or drafting boundary options that we're not going to use because they don't understand the civil objects like alignments and stationing. So we're going to use this cross-section tool. And we're going to load up a drawing seed here. And what that drawing seed is going to do is it's going to set the rest of these parameters so I don't have to worry about all of them. And it also defines some other seed files that are used behind the scenes when I create the drawings themselves, as well as how all the annotations done. Um, there's a whole lot to what's in this drawing seed that makes all of this work. So the next thing I need to do is pick the alignment that I'm going to follow. So I'm going to data point that alignment. When I do that, it automatically fills out the name with the name of that alignment, or I could change it if I wanted to create this set of name boundaries with a different name around them. Uh, this is fine, so I'll just leave it at that. I provide the starting and stopping stations where I want that cross-section to be created. I can do that dynamically, you can see. As I move my cursor here, I can define those stations. Uh, so I'm just going to come back to the beginning and click a data point to say start there. And then I could go down to wherever the ending point's going to be. Uh, maybe in this case I want to specify a number. So I'm just going to specify here that I want to stop down at station 21500. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my interval here a little bit. Instead of 20 foot intervals, I'm going to run at 100 foot intervals with my cross sections. So I can see my sections generated here. I can see where they're placed out all along the alignment. Uh, data point to accept those definitions, the beginning and ending points, and it goes through and it creates the name boundaries. I can see those name boundaries in my 3D file. So what these are are a three-dimensional object that defines where a cross-section is going to be cut and the size of the cross-section. Notice that these do have different heights to them. As it went through and it built these, it was looking at what elements existed in this file, the top and the bottom of the terrain of the uh, cut and fill slopes that are in here to make sure that they fit within the cross section. There's also some clearances that were applied here. So not only did it fit, it made sure that in this case there was a minimum of two um, units of clearance above this. In this case, we're working with some metric files. So two meters, or once you translate that down to the sheet, at the scale we were at, which was 100 scale, uh, you know, that appropriate sizing above it. We're going to use that for our annotation space. So there are some other parameters here. That's step one of the process, which is generating these name boundaries. Step two is to create the actual sheets from those name boundaries. Now because I had toggled on this option down here that said create drawings and show the dialog, as it completed step one, it went ahead and brought up the create drawing dialog for me and started step two. Now there's really nothing I need to change in here. All of this information has already been filled out for us by this drawing seed file that I selected that included 
the seed models that should be used for the drawings and the sheets that we'll create, and you'll see what those are in a moment here. Um, the annotation group that's going to be used to annotate these cross sections, etc. So we'll go ahead and click OK and let it start building the sheets. This does take a minute. There's a lot of sheets that we're building here. You can see the processing bar down in the lower right corner as it goes through and it builds all of these sheets, annotates the sheets, builds all the references that go together with all of them. All right, we paused the video for a minute there while those cross-sections created. There were 98 total sheets that got built, uh, and we'll pick back up now. So this is not quite real time. It did take a couple of minutes for those to build. But the result that you get out of this is that each of these name boundaries is a section that's cut into what we call a drawing model. And if we go to our Home tab, and select the models tool you can see these drawing models appear with a gray type icon on them here so each individual cross-section has been generated as a drawing model so if we open one of those up and let's take a look at it let's go down to let's say pick one down in here and we'll fit that view and we can see the drawing model that was created here. So this happens to be at station 15 plus 700, and we can see what it's cut. Now what this is, is it a drawing that has a reference of that three-dimensional space. So if I turn the reference off, you can see that the elements themselves, the roadways, the terrain, the corridor that was cut through, the terrain model that was cut through, that is being referenced in from the 3D model. In fact, anything that exists in that 3D model will be cut and displayed in these cross-sections. If you had pipes from the subsurface utilities, or just three-dimensional graphics that you had drawn using the, the standard microstation or the drafting tools, or a Revit model that you had referenced in, or a DWG model that you had referenced in, anything in the 3D model would appear in the cross-sections wherever it cuts through it. Now layered on top of that, this is where the annotations were placed. So the annotations that happened as the cross sections were put together, which includes the grid space, the labeling of the grid, the annotations here, we've got some, let me go ahead and turn our surface back on, we've got some slope annotations, we've got some offset elevation annotations, all of that is done in this drawing model. These individual drawing models are then referenced again to what we call a sheet model. And multiple cross sections are going to fit on a single sheet. So if we go up to a sheet model, uh, like this one here, and let it update, we'll see that there are multiple cross sections that are on this sheet model. In fact, there are four cross sections on this sheet. So this is four separate references. If we look at our reference tool, we'll see that those four drawing models are referenced into here. And that's what makes up a sheet model. The cross-section layout tools automatically adjusted and laid out the cross-sections depending on the varying heights of the cross-sections and appropriately put them on the sheets. Now to return to our drawing model or modeling environment. An easy way to do that is with your view group tools down here in the lower left corner, which you can select any of the drawing or sheet models from. You can also select your standard default models, or the most convenient one is if you select the multi-model views, it's going to return you to this space where we were viewing our multiple models, both our 2D and our 3D space. That concludes this exercise. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.